Good morning, Patty. How are you doing today? Hi. I'm great. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. One writer talking to another writer. I mean, it's it's like you're a superstar to so many of us because you broke free of the bedroom or the living room writing and, and you shared it with the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What a journey that's been. It has been. <laughs> it seems like a million years ago, but yeah. <laughs> but it never leaves you, though, does it? Because, I mean, that's once a writer, always a writer, and you can't flood this stuff out of your system. Yes. Well, I mean, I, I and I... I'm still a writer, you mm-hmm. know, I just don't write for TV anymore. Um, but I still, but I still write and, you know, I, I wrote this book and I would love to, to write more books. You know, I think, um, you know, that it's, it's just a passion that, that for better or worse is, is, is not going away. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the book is called in credits, how I broke up with Hollywood. That, that right there is a serious title in the way of saying, oh, really? Let me dive into this one right now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, hope, I hope that other people feel that way. <laughs> well, especially when it comes to a lot of our creative careers, because, I mean, there, there's so many changes going on in the industry right now that it's like you, you hit that wall and you go, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. And it's, it's like me walking away from terrestrial radio. I was done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think it's it was always hard for me to to uh, explain Mm -hmm. to people why I why I would leave that career, because I think, um, you know, people have this idea of of the entertainment business as being, um, you know, really glamorous Mm -hmm. and fun and um, and they don't realize all of the, um, you know, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes and it was very hard for me to put that into into a quick answer you know um and also because i was so traumatized by my experiences (laughs) that it was just hard for me to talk about it you know until i had been through a lot of therapy essentially you know um but so this is you know this book is really kind of the answer to to that question of like why would you quit such a cool job it's like okay here it is let me tell you what i went through let me tell you from the beginning of like how i got into it and then how i was disillusioned and you know how difficult it was to walk away i mean honestly because you know when you get when you break into such an exclusive uh club essentially um you know it's it's hard to 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 say yeah you know what i i i think i'll i'll leave yeah <laughs> um because it's because it's a job that everybody wants, you know, and you work so hard to to break in and you and you sacrifice so much to 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 get in that, you know, even after you realize it's not what you had dreamed it would be, you know, and it's in fact, you know, killing you. Um it's just so hard to give up all of that investment that you had put into it. That's every reason why I became a daily writer back in July of 1994, because I knew what the industry was doing to me and I couldn't find somebody who could relate with me. So Julia Cameron's The Artist Way was the thing that opened up my heart. Me too. All right. Was, I, <laughs> yes, I, 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 you know, that was that was one of the things that I uh, reached for at the depths of, you know, my, uh, writer's block. Um, you know, I, I, I took a, I took a sabbatical from TV writing, um, after a few years when I was just feeling super burnt out and, um, and I tried to, uh, you know, do some writing on my own. And I just was just having such a hard time Mm -hmm. because I, I was so beaten down and, and uh, a friend of mine um, recommended that I read The Artist's Way. And so I, I did it and I, you know, I, 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 through so much of it, I was like, oh, this is, this is silly. This yes, isn't gonna work, exactly. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my all into this. And so I did all the uh, practice exercises and stuff. I, I wrote a letter to somebody who had creatively wounded me, yeah. you know, like, did you do that one? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I did, I, I took myself on artist dates um, <laughs> and I, and I did my morning pages religiously. You know, that's when you write um, every morning, you write three pages of sort of stream of consciousness uh, stuff. And, and it's for, it's for your eyes only. Nobody else gets to read it. 
and uh and it was it just worked it worked yeah. you know i mean i i i realized after doing doing all of these exercises that i actually did feel like i got some of that juice back um and i still like even now i do morning pages yeah, yeah, you know yeah. and it's and it's not and i don't i don't do it to like you know figure out my next book or whatever you know i do it because it's it's just a way of you know kind of communing with uh, it sounds so woo woo but like just kind of communing with my thoughts, yep. <laughs> you know, um, I don't know. How do you, how, do you still do morning pages? Oh my God. Yes. And, and, and it's grown into so many different other journals as well. In fact, one, one of the ones mm. that I really keep up with is one, I call it a defrag journal where you go in there to ask the question, then question your answer. And what happens is it mm-hmm. continues. And I think I got that from the meditation Nidra learning how to unblock the block. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's super important. I, I I think it's really important to, you know, just keep all of those lines of communication open within yourself, mm-hmm. um, because you know our daily lives are so busy <laughs> and are so we're so like easily distracted. I mean, it, it just it's very difficult to even hear your own thoughts. So I think it's important that we make the the time and the space for that as artists. Now you were talking about writer's block. John Lennon uh, hid in the in the Dakota because he had writer's block. But then Johnny Resnick of the Goo Goo Dolls sat with me and said, "You know what writer's block is? It's when you look at yourself in the mirror and you think everything around you sucks." He says, "You have to start liking your sucking." <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's great that's great yeah and and it's and it, what happens is that today i give myself permission to write very poorly okay that's it that's my i gave myself permission go ahead and do it now yeah if that for sure for sure i mean that's part of what morning pages is about right yeah, yeah. it's like is actually ri- writing and not needing it to be good yeah you know not <laughs> knowing that knowing that no one's going to see this and you can you know you 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 can just put whatever you want down. And, and I do think that that is a skill that, that is really helpful when you are actually writing something that people are going to read because you, you have to turn off the critic in your head, the Mm -hmm. editor that's going to like shut you down. And, and the, all the like really good, honest stuff is going to come out when that critic is turned off. Right. So, um, so yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I think also, oh, I had another brilliant thought while you were talking and now it's gone. <laughs> uh, maybe it'll come back to me later. You know, you were talking, you were talking about how it's for our, our eyes only. I, I challenged myself as a, I guess it's maybe because I'm a broadcaster, but I thought, okay, if you're feeling this way, so do others take it to a podcast. And so that's where I come up with the choice and the daily mess is it's all taken from, I, I always say from the sofa to the studio and it's, and it's just being open and real with the writing. But I fear that mm-hmm. because of these AIs. AI is, is coming for everyone's job. Yes. <laughs> Essentially, <It is. laughs> you know, and it's um, it, the way that uh, for people who don't know this, the, the way that, that, um, AI like like chat GPT works is that it scrapes the internet right for for like it just uh, absorbs everything that's on the internet so like everything anyone's ever written you know all the TV shows that are out there you know everything it's just taking all that stuff and regurgitating it and mm-hmm. so the people who actually created that stuff to begin with they should be getting compensated for that. Mm -hmm. They should be getting credited for that. Um, But right now with AI, you know, none of that stuff is happening. It's just the, it's just the wild west out there with, (laughs) with, with AI. (laughs) But don't, in in a situation like this, don't you feel better that you're away from television, that you you personally are not having to deal with it? Oh God. Yes. 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 (laughs) Every day I'm thankful for that. You know, um, you know, a, a, the process of writing this book, you know, was it was difficult, yeah. definitely at, at times, you know, especially a memoir, because you're really putting yourself out there. Um, but with even with all of that difficulty, 
I would trade that any day for the, you know, the difficulty that I had working in television, you know, because with this, with writing a book, you know, I just had so much more creative control yep. and, yep. Um, you know, and, and, and also, you know, the, the process of getting it published, you know, I felt that every step of the way, um, people were just being so much more respectful of my work um, than I ever felt when I was working in, in Hollywood. Mm. Did you have a wine glass moment while putting it together? And a wine glass moment is when you have a glass of wine and you say, all right, I've got the courage to do this. I'm going to do something I know I wouldn't do any other day. Hmm. Interesting. Um, a wine glass moment. I've never heard that before. It's only because in, in my books, I'll have wine glass moments. I'll go, okay, what could I do with this character that is completely not what was in your original plans? Okay, take it and then, oh, and then, and then okay. challenge yourself as a writer to get out of it. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. Um, I would say that uh, uh, I probably had a few of those. But I mean, there was this one time where... I, mean, I had actually had a few, a few moments where there were very strange coincidences that mm -hmm. happened that made me feel like, okay, this is the, this is a sign for me to keep going, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I, so, so a lot of the stuff that I wrote about in my memoir, you know, happened a long time ago. And these are people that are no longer in my life. I, I haven't seen them in many, many years. And then one time I was like writing, a, a, you know, a chapter about this particular time in my life. And, you know, I just happened to run into that person. Oh, God. You know, like at my hairdresser, at my hairdresser. And I was just like, wow, you know, and um, and I and I had like this great conversation with her where I was able to, you know, talk to her very honestly about this this job that we worked at and i said you know thank you so much for just being so kind to me you know because it was just such a hard situation and and we had like a really great conversation about it um but but it was that those kinds of moments i guess these wine glass moments <laughs> um where uh where i felt like okay you know somewhere some there there's something that's that's urging me to to go on you know to keep telling the, the, these stories creative person to creative person we have creative people that are going to be listening to this conversation how did you deal with the moment when all of a sudden it wasn't just patty lynn you you're now that girl that used to be you used to be this and how did you deal with that <laughs> um oh wow um it's it's been really difficult mm -hmm. at times because I think that uh, you know people like to uh, see you as a certain you know as a in a certain way right you know and and it was really before I got this book published you know it was it was hard for me to say oh yeah I'm I'm a writer but then sort of not have anything to show for that mm -hmm. except for my previous writing you know, tv writing career you know so it it is really hard but i think it, i had to just come to terms with the fact that i am i'm not my job right i'm not my career <laughs> right i'm a i'm a person <laughs> with with a lot of other sort of aspects to to who i am you know um I, I, I have a lot of hobbies. I have a lot of interests. I, I sew, I, you know, I do some acting on the side. I, you know, it's like, I, there's, there are many dimensions to a person. Mm -hmm. And so I think we all get into trouble when we define ourselves, you know, very narrowly by what it is that we do for a living. And it's especially hard when what you do, did for a living was something kind of high profile or something that, you know, people like to you know talk about um but it's just something that I, I i kind of have to still still deal with like on a day to day basis of like yeah that's not that's not who i am right. it's part of it's part of who i am it's part of what i did uh but i'm i'm so much more than that you know yeah. um and i think everybody everybody should um you know take a little bit of 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 that like just not not 
taking their career so uh, seriously mm-hmm. in, in terms of like their identity. Mm-hmm. I always look at it as being like a computer file. The I have a, um, I don't have multiple personalities. I've just got a lot of files. And this 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 move yes. that I happen to be in is going to go in that file over there. And maybe I'll come back to it another day. But at least I've got it in a file. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we and we also need to just, uh, you know, be able to feel good about ourselves without, um, you know, having the the accolades or the, you know, external sort of achievements, Mm -hmm. uh, because all of those things are so fleeting and they are not under our control. I was going to say, speaking of that, about, about being under control and stuff. So as a writer, you know that we have to listen to the voices in order to put the words on the page. How did you learn to trust those voices in your head when at other times other voices are going, well, you give them the chance to talk. Let me talk, too. <laughs> well, um, that is a lifelong um, uh, uh, <laughs> project. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if if what you're talking about is like the voices in your head that yep. say, uh, you know, nothing you say is is worthwhile. No one wants to read this. <laughs> uh, you know, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that we definitely need to um, put those voices on the back burner. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know, in order to get anything done. Um, but but it is it is it is an ongoing, you know, it is an ongoing process And I just, you know, for me, it was really hard because I grew up with like a very critical voice in my head that was just always telling me that um, I wasn't good enough and that, you know, that nobody wants to read what you have to say or, you know, uh, and and so um, I didn't have a lot of, you know, sort of encouragement um, that to to balance that out. So I really had to learn how to give myself that encouragement and to find people in my life who would be encouraging and who would, uh, you know, um, balance out some of that negativity. Um, I I think it's I think it's just natural Mm -hmm. that we're all going to have that negativity. Um, And I and I also think that it's sometimes, you know, it's helpful to have, uh, you know, a little bit of a critical eye, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, But I think, you know, we, in order to get anything out of your, your, your head and onto the page, you have to be able to, uh, to put that, you know, aside. Yeah. Yeah. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much. It was been, it's been great talking to you. Oh, I've learned so much from you and I can't wait to continue reading your book because your book is really a teaching tool. If people look beyond the paragraphs and see the real story there. Thank you so much. Well, you be brilliant today. Okay. (laughs) You too.